Welcome to another vid. Now this one is just a little tutorial again. I've been asked by, I hope I pronounced this right, to fund me. If not, I apologize. How to install the Hertfordshire map on OMSI 2. And because they can be a bit troublesome, I thought, yep, I can do you that. So here's my OMSI 2 and not installed. No Hertfordshire map, so you know I'm not cheating. So let's back to the desktop. Now there's two things you really need to get these to work properly. I'll put the links in the description. The first one obviously is the map you want to use. So for this one we're going to be using Hertfordshire version 3. So go to that address which will be in the description. Download. Agree and download. And I'll cancel it because I've already got it save time and the next one you need is OMSI map tools which is where a lot of people go wrong I think because what that does that checks that the map you've installed has got all the objects it needs now if you haven't got them it will tell you what you need but doesn't really tell you where to get it but good old Google will so we'll come to that in a minute so first thing you need to do is to get the map and with WinRAR or WinZip, or nowadays just Windows, extract it. That's got three minutes left. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so once that's extracted, if you look inside the one you've unzipped and not the one you downloaded, like an idiot. And you'll see you've got quite a few folders. So if you go to your Steam directory or wherever your OMSI is installed to, which are mine, is games, Steam, Steam apps, common, OMSI 2, you'll notice that you have the same folders there in there. So copy them across. Now sometimes it will come up saying you've already got some of these files because a lot of the maps share resources from one map to another one. So don't panic too much. There we go, we've got 5,612 files with the same name, which is basically the, the, the scenery, the splines, the bits and bobs. So we'll let it replace them. Not always the best idea, but shouldn't cause too many problems, hopefully. It's just one map might have got a newer version of one than another, but should still work. Right, that's most of it done really. The only other thing you need to do in the vehicles folder, you will have usually rather a folder that says copy the contents of this folder to any bush you want to use, or you will just have what they call a hoth file, which that is for the IBIS, I think if I remember right they call it. So it knows where your stops are, your timetables, your bus, basically your bus route information. So if you go into your OMSI 2 directory again into vehicles and this is one of the hardest bits finding the bush you want to use now I use the when I find it Stratton Glocken bus 1999 is the one that I usually like to use so I see in there, look, we've got Bowden half, Berlin half, Daytonford half, all the other maps basically. So we'll copy that one across. So now that bus knows 
the rules for that map. Easy peasy. So once you've done that, you can close everything down and we'll move on to the map checker. So once again, extract it. And just run that one like you usually would anything else. And first thing it says is select the map folder that you want to check. So open that. And if you've not got zone alarm, then you won't get that pop up saying that it's trying to scan your computer. And now you need to direct this to the map you've just installed. So once again, games, Steam, Steam apps, common, Omzi 2, maps, Hertfordshire. Okay, as you can see, look, that will check that everything it needs is there. Now I'm going to keep my fingers crossed it is. Alright, so there we go. Scenery objects 312, scenery object folders 31, splines 20, spline folders 4, missing objects none, missing splines 0. Now, if there is anything missing, it will say there, missing objects, obviously how many. Um, and same with splines and then underneath it will actually oh I've done sorry up here look missing objects or missing splines it will then tell you which ones you need so for example it's bus stop a dot sco I think they're called then go on google search for that and usually within a couple of seconds you'll find that it's part of somebody's kind of mod that they've made for like different bus stops or different bus lanes things like that and then just put, if it's a spline, move it to the splines folder. It's simple really, it's just telling it to put stuff where it needs to be. Run your map checker again until it says like that, everything's okay. Now if you now open OMSI again. Then in his map drop down we should hopefully have Oh I thought I couldn't see it then. Hertfordshire version three. Now one of the things I always used to do is not read it and just click play. And nine times out of ten, the first time it will crash because it highlights there look, load the latest state of the map which is on somebody else's computer with different configurations. So first time I always do load map without buses. Then you're starting from afresh. And leave this alone, don't change your date and your time because once again, it wants to be default on your first run. So leave that alone. And click start, keep your fingers crossed. I say keep your fingers crossed because zombie tends to crash at the best of times. Now here we go. Where do you want to start? So it don't really matter as long as it works. Now if you do have any missing splines or anything like that, it'll this is when it'll crash on this bit when it says like loading what do they call them? So squares or sections or something. And there we have it. We are now in Hertfordshire. So it's just a case now of choosing the bush you want. And there we have the bus in Hertfordshire. 
Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now, the other question I've been asked is what my graphics settings are. And I said, I'll tell you. But to be honest, I haven't got a clue. Because it's been that long since I've played this game. So, for anyone else that wants to know, let's have a look. Because I'm kind of as intrigued as you. Right, now you'll notice that obviously all the funky colours and one of the reasons my graphics probably look better than yours will which sounds big headed is because I use a program called SweetFX which is a 3D injector which you can run with most games and it does make things look a little bit better but for some reason on OMSI it tends to give you that it doesn't affect your gameplay it's just when you pause it for some reason it goes a bit psychedelic but my graphic settings are Target frame rate 30. Hmm, thought that'd have been higher, but still. Uh, neighbor tiles count one. Now, the more tiles, that's what they're called, the more tiles you have, the more of the map it tries to load while you're driving through it. So imagine you're driving down the street and you've got a block of houses to your left, a block of houses to your right. That would be a tile. After that, you don't need to see them. So why bother loading them? If you're loading 10 tiles to your right, 10 tiles to your left, you're loading a lot of scenery you're never going to see. So keep that down, you'll keep your frame rate up. Maximum object visibility distance, 651. Play around with that so you don't get stuff appearing as you're driving up to it. Uh, minimum object size, 2.6%. Not really sure, I think that's something to do with your mirrors maybe. So things disappear when they're in your mirrors. Could be wrong. Uh, for reflections, 20.80% or 0.8% even. Real time reflections full. Particle systems active, that's for your smoke out your exhausts and stuff like that. Um, only the user vehicle will produce them. Obviously, cars driving the other way, not really bothered if his exhaust smokes or not. And no particles will be in the reflection, so again, in your mirror, don't really need to see them. You're not really looking in your mirror, you're looking forward. Sun glow effect, you can turn that up and down. Oh, sorry, no, that's different. Sun glow effect. And you've got maximum object complexity. So at the minute I'm on full, so it'll load all like your your post boxes, your benches, your seating areas, little bits and bobs. If your computer's struggling, turn them down. You might not see a phone box, but you'll get your frames per second back. And maximum map complexity, I've got all the way down, so it only loads objects that are on or near my main route which once again if you can't see it why load it and graphics advanced uh, forced reflection economy mode will activate if my frames per second drop below 20 and it will deactivate if it goes above 40 uh, dynamic tile count reduction Reduce tile count below 20 frames per second and increase tile count above 40, uh, sorry, 25 frames per second. So it, it gives your computer like a little window to work to. Um, use material channels, night map, light map, light map of terrain, reflection map and bump map, all ticked. Manual screen ratios, unticked because I just use a standard 16.9 monitor. Uh, use low res textures is unticked because mine runs all right running the high textures and limit all textures apart from your own bus to 256 pixels is unticked again if you load a lower texture it's going to free resources it's going to run better but if you can run the high textures obviously it's going to look better and um, maximum texture memory for high res textures i've got up to 4048 megabytes so roughly four gig again depending on how much ram you've got and what's on your graphics card you might want to alter that slightly to Make it run better and real time reflections texture size i've got at 512. But once again it's just down to how much memory and the kind of resources you've got on your computer but there we go that is hertfordshire that's how you install a map kind of they're all pretty much the same i say it's basically just a case of making sure you've got all your splines and all your scenery objects and use your map checker to make sure you've got them. If you want to use sweet effects, um, to be honest, I didn't think about adding that to this video. But if you go to Google, just literally search OMSI 2 sweet effects 
FX as in Foxtrot X-Ray, not E-F-F-E-C-T-S. And probably the first three pages will give you a, a guide of how to do it. It's literally the same as them. You just extract it from the zip file you download, bang it in your OMSI 2 folder, and that's it. You're good, good, you're good to go. So I hope that's helped. If there's any questions, give us a shout. Um, I'll try my best to answer, but as I say, it's been a long time since I've played this, but that should cover most of your problems, to be honest, if you do have any trying to install maps. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.